guys, welcome back. Today we're out at the range just to have some fun and have another range day. Today is an Omar range day. This is an Omar. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Omar works with us over at Copper Custom. It's warm, man. It's like 70 degrees, I think. That's... Last week at this time, it was like 30 degrees. So we came out to have some fun, but we've been getting a lot of rain lately. As a matter of fact, the Mack range is almost completely flooded. We had to drive through water to get in here and check this out. So, yeah, it's kind of wet out here, but we're going to shoot anyway. Matter of fact, we're just going to make a whole lot of water spouts and play around with some different guns. A couple of them are new, at least to the channel and to us. Um, we brought out that Galil that we modified with yep. the Zukov end. brought out a Definitive Arms AK, brought out a KH-9, brought out some new ammunition from Freedom Munitions, which is steel cased. I want to see how that runs out of different firearms, like the KH-9 and my CZ. Basically, we're just screwing around having a good time today. So sit back, grab something to drink, and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Well, this is some interesting stuff, guys. I just got this in from Freedom Munitions. It's called American Steel, and um, it's actually steel cased ammunition that's brass plated. I've never seen anything quite like this before, so it is a steel case, but it's brass plated, and it looks like a regular brass cased brass bullet. I don't think it's a bimetal bullet. I'll have to do some research, <clears throat> but um, it's just 115 grain load. That's kind of uh, very interesting. It should work fine. I don't know. We're gonna give it a try out of my CZ P01, which is my carry gun. If, uh, if this stuff works well out of the CZ, it's a great alternative for uh, plinking and target ammo because the cost is low, which you'd think would be the complete opposite if you're actually brass plating steel cases, but maybe that brass plating helps with um, extraction. So let's see what happens here. This is the very first magazine of the stuff I've ever fired. Pretty sure I got a round of the chamber. I do. Let's, uh, let's see if it cycles the old CZ. stuff works pretty good. How many did you catch, Omar? Get over here. Oh, did, did you catch me? You throw them down. Omar was catching the empty cases. Let me see one. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like. So it had, it works fine, it seems, in the uh, in the CZ. It's even, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll try to take a picture of it. But it's even um, brass plated on the inside. Let me see if I can try to prove. I mean, I don't know why they'd lie and say it's a steel case. Let's see if I can carve some of that brass off with a knife. But that looks just like a standard brass cased round but it doesn't look like it really expands like a brass case. You'll see a little bit of bulging. That's cool. Huh, that steel case stuff seems to be reasonably accurate. <laughs> And my Omar caught <laughs> several of the rounds. I dropped some. Good catching, Omar. Is it is it ejecting consistently? Yeah. So we're seeing consistent ejection out of the stuff. I mean, it's that's pretty cool. Huh. I've seen copper washed stuff before, like back in the 80s. The, uh, the Norinco ammo that would come in for AKs was copper washed, so it would have a copper washed bullet and, and case, and like the whole cartridge was the same color. But uh, I can't say I recall ever shooting brass plated steel before. All right guys, I'm gonna uh, shoot the CZ P10C. I cannot wait for these things to come out. Uh, I've been wanting one for a long time now. Awesome. <laughs> this, guys, is the uh, USA Forge. This is a steel-cased Winchester stuff that I bought mistakenly earlier, I guess late last year. And you've seen me have nothing but problems with this stuff. It's been not the most reliable ammo. Just about every gun, maybe 50% or more that I've fired it in, has had some type of malfunction. It's just a standard Wolf or Tula-looking cartridge. 
but I've not found it to be reliable whatsoever. So I'm kind of interested to see how the uh, the Freedom Munitions stuff, the brass plated stuff, stacks up against this. So far, no problems with the Freedom Munitions. We brought out about 250, 300 rounds of it. So we'll shoot it and I'll let you know if there's any malfunctions. But I'm curious if this stuff will run out of my carry gun, which is my P01 CZ. So I've loaded up 14 rounds. And let's see, this will be a testament to the CZ's reliability if it can make it through a magazine without a hiccup. It kills just about every other gun I've put it in. Huh, CZ doesn't seem to mind it. This old girl puts pretty much everything down its pipe and doesn't seem to have much problems with it. I can't remember actually having to clear a malfunction from this gun yet. I'm going to have to induce a few just to practice malfunction drills. It's been a very good gun so far. This, guys, is a 7.62x39 Galil Ace. What we've done at Copper is we are tinkering around with some Zukov forehand grips, and we modified the grip, not the gun. The gun's completely unmodified, but we modified the grip so that it will fit on the Galil Aces, the 308s, the 7.62x39s, and hopefully it'll fit the 5.56 uh, rifles that are gonna come out here shortly. So it looks really, really good on the gun. It allows you to put M-Lock or MOE accessories on it. You can see I have a hand stop here. I have an enforced light up here mounted on a 45 degree angle uh, M-Lock accessory. And on top of it, I have just a Trijicon MRO. I've become very fond of these little red dot sights and that's mounted on top to the pick rail via a Midwest Industries quick detach mount. You cannot co-witness with the iron sights on here. We even tried low mounts with the MRO. It still sets just a little too high to get a co-witness, but I'm not a real big fan of co-witness, to be honest with you. I don't think it's all that necessary. The gun's more likely to fail than the optic if you buy a quality optic. And the one thing that would happen to an optic that might take it down would be to get it caked in mud or something like that. In which case, you're not going to see through it anyway. You need to be able to get that thing off quickly and go to the iron sights. Um, so anyway, I like the QD mounts. I don't get all wound up or get twisted around the axle about not having a co-witness with my red dot sights as long as I have one a QD mount. I do have a Savvy Sniper Sling, which we have a Copper Custom as well. This one is clipped to the standard mounting point here in the rear of the rifle. And then we're using the MOE slot up here to clip onto, but I do have an MOE accessory ordered that will allow me to properly attach it to the handguard. So now you can actually sling the gun, put accessories on it. And the nice thing about it is Copper selling the complete package, basically giving you a Savvy Sniper sling and this Zukov foreign that's modified for free. It's still 1709 for the 17. I'm, I'm sorry, for the uh, 7.62 by 39 rifle like this one. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. We have a few of them in stock. We're modifying them and offering them up. This is going to be uh, the first full 30 rounds I've fired out of it. What's kind of cool is I like the 20-round tanker magazines. But I'm going to try out one of these slab sides here and see what I can shoot. You know what? I'm just going to run this gun. Didn't even charge around. I don't think I did. Haha. -ha. There we go. Now I'm going to shoot. That's fun, man. Lots of water downrange today, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Keeps your hand away from the, the barrel. It doesn't seem to heat up too much. We're gonna run it pretty hard today, but it's nice being able to put a flashlight and stuff like that on the gun. This actually makes it a, a very competent little fighting rifle with modern accessories. You can still collapse and extend the factory stock and put stuff up front. Kind of digging it. I was gonna have Omar shoot this, but he handed me the gun. So we're gonna try the uh, that Winchester steel case stuff out of the CZP-10C and see if it likes this stuff. Omar is going to watch for ejection, see if it's erratic. He said it was a little bit erratic out of the uh, out of the SP-01 or the P-01 Tactical or whatever it is. P-01 Compact, that's what it is. Let's see how it shoots out of the P-10C.
Now this little CZ likes it too. Man, this thing shoots good. Holy cow, I love this gun. It's almost enough to make me consider going back to a striker-fired pistol. Almost. Omar did say that that steel-cased uh, Winchester stuff was fairly consistent on the ejection, so it doesn't seem to uh, affect this gun whatsoever. It's kind of cool. The CZs are kind of hard to stop, man. That's one of the reasons why I like them so much. This, guys, is my Romy G manufactured by my buddy Chase over at uh, Definitive Arms. This is a 1982 kit build. It has its original barrel and original all serial numbers matching parts kit. And this is my personal gun. I'm firing it for the first time this afternoon. I've been looking for an excuse to come out to the range to shoot this little guy, so let's see how it shoots. I've always wanted a Romanian G rifle that was as authentic as possible. What makes it kind of stand out from the crowd in the AK world is this little uh, forward grip. I call it the dongle of death, but uh, it actually works out to be quite a nice forward grip even if you don't it feels awkward like this but like this if it was a little bit shorter it would be pretty much a modern BCM style uh, hand grip so it's kind of forward thinking but some folks think it's a little bit goofy looking I love it though Target shooting's fun, but just blasting is even funner. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. I love it. Ah, oh, I love the AK. Look at this beauty, guys. Chase just does some magnificent work. It's got his parkerization on it, which we know from Iraq Veterans Meltdown video that you can get the barrel red hot to where it droops and the finish stays on it. I love that finish. I actually had him apply that to my uh, my barrel rifle, which was kind of had a screwed up finish on it from IO. And um, yeah, it's a beauty now. Love this Romy G. This is my BNT KH9. It's a nine millimeter gun that's very similar to an old 80s gun called the Sights Spectre. I did a video on that about a year ago. BNT has kind of a, a little bit of a history of taking old 80s designs and putting their twist on them and then making them a Swiss quality. And the, uh, the BNT did that with this uh, KH9, which again is a very close facsimile of the original Sights Spectre. It has much of the same functionality, but they've added their own twist, their own flair to it. You'll notice that uh, I have the bolt locked to the rear. That's done by this little button here on the top. You pull the charging handle to the rear and push that button. It locks the weapon open. It has an ambi magazine release that's present on both sides of the gun. Then it has this decocker, which is on both sides of the gun as well. And what that does, let me show you. I'll go ahead and, and charge it. This is some of the, uh, the Freedom Munitions brass-plated steel-cased ammo in a 30-round BNT magazine. Stick that into the gun, charge it, and now I can decock it, and you'll see a little green dot inside that window. And that little green dot, when you look at it, tells you that the gun is loaded and ready to fire, but that first shot's gonna be like double action. It's gonna pull the striker to the rear and release it. Every shot after that, though, is gonna be like a standard semi-automatic pistol. It's gonna be a little bit lighter and a drastically shorter trigger pull. So let's go ahead and fire this thing. The sights really are meant for a carbine, which you'll notice it actually has the standard BNT furniture here where you can put a side folding BNT stock on it if you form one it, which I'm gonna to have to do here. But let's go ahead and uh, find something to shoot at. <laughs> there is like zero recoil, guys. That is so funny. Man, this thing has like no recoil whatsoever. Does not lock open on the last shot fired. But uh, that's a very mild recoiling little gun. It does have a tri lug on it. Next time I shoot, I'm gonna put the suppressor on. But uh, I have to go load up a magazine first. Well, I started digging around the Jeep and I actually found some Freedom Munitions 147 grain, standard 147 grain ball. This is not the Hush stuff, which will allow me now to take my Octane 9 with a tri lug adapter. Make sure the weapon's clear. I'm gonna lock the bolt to the rear. You can see it's clear. I'm gonna take the suppressor, it's tri lug mount, put it on the gun. Take some subsonic ammo and see if it works. Let's also see how quiet it is. 
Uh, what do we got here? <laughs> that's pretty quiet, guys. You think that's quiet, Omar? Yeah. <laughs> He's back there quiet. smiling. It's quiet. <laughs> when I hit the water, it's pretty loud. You hear how loud it smacks that water? It's pretty loud yeah. when it hits water. But if I just shoot the dirt berm, That's awesome. And that's it. That is a very cool suppressor host. I'm definitely gonna have to file a Form 1 on this bad boy. Wow, what a cool gun. Very, very cool. I love it when companies do stuff out of the, out of the box like that. They just kind of randomly do cool stuff. I love 80s guns, as you guys know, know if you watch the channel. And to see a Swiss quality sight Spectre. The P26 is cool. I showed you a video on that. That's pretty much a, a Swiss made Tech 9. They have some really cool stuff they do over there at BNT. All right. The difference between uh, it hitting the water and the dirt is insane. That's awesome. Well, the wind's kicking up again this afternoon. What I want to do, guys, is I'm going to show you. This is some more of the 147 grain Freedom Munitions, just standard ball ammo. I'm going to shoot it into the water, and hopefully the microphone will pick up the difference between a couple of rounds in the water and then a couple of rounds directly into the dirt berm. Here's the water. All right, so you can hear that kind of pop down range. Now I'm gonna shoot it just straight into the dirt. So I don't know if you guys can hear that with the shotgun mic or not, but I can hear the bullet actually thud that uh, backstop down there. And it's about as loud as the, the gunshot itself. It's pretty darn quiet. I definitely, definitely have to file a Form 1 on this thing. I love it. <laughs> that is so awesome. Oh gosh. I want I need to get one of these for myself. When this thing comes out, guys, we just can't stop playing with it. This thing has been absolutely awesome. The Echo Trigger is by far the best trigger of its type on the market. I've never seen the thing malfunction. I don't know how many thousands of rounds now. But I'll report back on that more later. Meanwhile, I got a barrel to burn out on this BCM. Oh man, that's just insanely fun. I just got fed brass for breakfast. Did you? Omar yeah. just ate a bunch of brass. Hopefully he didn't hit the lens on the camera. I've destroyed more <laughs> camera lenses that way. This stuff actually works pretty good, guys. This uh, polymer pop-in key mod stuff to keep the heat away from your hands. We're doing mag dump after mag dump and uh, it's warm, but it's not uncomfortably hot. This metal rail would be impossible to hold on to right now. People always ask me if they should get a you know, just a stainless steel barrel or a nitrided barrel or a barrel that has a chrome lined bore this one's chrome lined it really depends on the application if you're trying to shoot for extreme precision and, and accuracy is your thing you're probably going to want to get a nitride or just a good stainless steel match grade barrel if you're doing what i'm doing with this rifle with an echo trigger and i'm just running rounds through it you're definitely probably going to want to go chrome chrome that's what it's intended for a lot of people say that it's meant to prevent corrosion and stuff like that that's not why barrels were originally chrome lined. The Germans started doing it in World War II with their machine guns because it extends the life of the barrel. Chrome lined barrels handle heat and friction much better than uh, other barrel types. Now, some say the nitride's just as tough. I've never seen any proof of that, but um, yeah, if I'm doing stuff like this for machine guns or for echo trigger type applications, I definitely want chrome lined. Now we're just gonna make some water spouts. I'm such a big kid. I love that echo trigger, man. I wonder how long before I burn the barrel out of this thing. 
Gotta put a suppressor on it too and try that. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed coming out to the range with me and Omar this afternoon. If you guys wanna support the Military Arms Channel, YouTube's pretty much demonetized us for the moment. If you'd like to really support the Military Arms Channel, swing by our Patreon page. I'll put the link down below and I'll put it in the description below. Every little bit helps, guys. Also, if you wanna to continue to support Copper Custom, you can do so by swinging by coppercustom.com. Also, please be sure to check out full30.com. That's full30.com, where we've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is full30.com. Say goodbye, Omar. All right, see you later, guys. <laughs> see you guys.